Hello? So, welcome everyone. Do you hear me? Is the microphone on? Yes, it is. So, thank you all for coming, and we are about to start day two of this training session organized by Globernance with kind support of this institution, San Telmo Museum, uh, for which we are all grateful. Uh, we are late, obviously, so we'll try to run as quickly as possible. The, uh, the, the focus of this, of, this, uh, of this session should be on the role of the states and on the standards of care that uh, would be expected from business. So it's a it's very broadly focused, focused theme. So what we would like to do is to first um, have uh, a presentation by Mikhail Mancisidor about the, uh, let's say, the developments at the UN level that basically are setting a conceptual framework for this discussion. And then uh, uh, I will speak with, uh, with uh, Inigo Ugarte about the perspectives from, let's say, a local level, from, from this region, uh, basically looking at this through the eyes of uh, small and medium enterprises. What does it mean, actually, for, uh, for uh, entrepreneurs, for startups, and for basically all of us? Uh, but before we get to that, allow me to do a short introduction of my perspectives on this issue and my perspectives on why we actually having, why we are having this discussion and why it is relevant to have this discussion equally in Geneva and in San Sebastian, or Donostia. <laughs> um, so th actually the, the reason why we are having this discussion is very simple, it's, it's the globalization. 40, 50 years ago the business has been conducted in a very different way. Most of the business was conducted locally, there were a couple of big national companies that were, uh, let's say, in close relationship with the, with the state. But for most, most of us, for most of our ancestors, the generation before us, uh, it was simply irrelevant what was, and for their business, the, the businesses they worked in or that they have been uh, managing, it was irrelevant what, what was happening in different countries, simply because that, that was the way the economy operated. But in just one generation, we have moved from this model to a very different, a very different, different model, and the challenge is how we can reconnect the business as it is being conducted right now with the values that we share, and the values that have been basically naturally embedded in business 40, 40, 40 or 50 years ago, at least at the at the at the local level. So, uh, as I said, there will be two perspectives that we will try to connect. First is this pers is this let's say top-down perspective, uh, this uh, setting of a conceptual framework for business and human rights, which is, the, which is, the, which is done at the intergovernmental level and at the UN level. And secondly, the, perspe and, uh, the second perspective is the perspective from below, perspective of um, small and medium enterprises that are suddenly finding themselves challenged by this new, by this, uh, new situation. And uh, I guess that's my introduction. I don't need to say, say more. So let me, let me introduce Mikhail Mancisidor, who's the independent expert with, uh, with, with UN, but until, until very recently has been a director of a, of a Basque branch of the UNESCO. Um, he's the member of the Committee on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights. And uh, if there's anything else you would like to add about your, your, your qualifications. No, it's enough, it's enough like that. <laughs> the short are the best. Okay, so let's start with your presentation. Thank you very much. Um, I have to um, I apologize. I am, I, I'm, I'm recovering from a very serious uh, flu. I have been uh, passing through this uh, week. Um, I have not. Um, I, I was not able to, to, to prepare a presentation as, as neat or as well done as uh, you, of course, uh, deserve. Uh, but uh, I can assure that, uh, given the, the circumstances, uh, I, I did my, my best to, to be here in front of, of, of you. I'm uh, still under the effects of the medication and the antibiotics and the paracetamol and so on. So I apologize for any failure uh, I can uh, commit. Thank you. Um, I, I prepared, um, I prepared, it's, 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 
I have this uh, very short uh, presentation. Um, in uh, three points. Uh, first, uh, well, the presentation is about corporate, corporate sector activities and state obligation and under human rights treaties in general and in particular in uh, the, the treaty I am expert on, the International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights. Uh, in this uh, covenant, there is a uh, committee that I'm a member of, of this uh, committee, the Committee on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights. Okay, um, I want to present uh, the short um, uh, speech uh, in, in three steps, in three um, parts. First, um, I want to explain, uh, or I want to, to, to present um, very shortly, uh, how the committee has um, dealing with the issue of corporate uh, activities vis-a-vis -vis the obligation of the, of the content of the uh, International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights. And we have a uh, deal with this issue in many, in many issues or by many means or many documents. And we, uh, we, um, uh, we need to, 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 to explain or we need to, to know how, how the, what, uh, which are the, those the different documents, the difference between the, uh, an open letter and a statement and general comment or a concluding observation. We have uh, present uh, general comments and statements and concluding observations regarding um, issues of uh, corporate uh, activities, and we, we, we need to, 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 to understand the difference between those uh, documents. Uh, then uh, we had um, we will have enough information to, to, to focus directly with the, the question. Uh, are we um, talking about um, just uh, declaration, about just resolution, recommendation, or are, um, uh, are we talking about uh, real uh, existing uh, binding uh, uh, international uh, law? Uh, what, which is, what, are, what are the differences between the, the, the obligation by the states and uh, the obligation, if, if uh, any, of other actors. And then a uh, last point with a particular issues, very important in, uh, in our case, in the case of the International Covenant on Economic, on Economic Social and Cultural Rights. Okay, the Committee on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights is the, um, is the body of 18 independent experts that monitor implementation of the International Covenant uh, by its state's party, obviously. Now, uh, as you probably well know, the, the Covenant was signed in uh, 1966 and uh, entered in, um, in power in 1976. And now uh, there are uh, 163 states that are part of this uh, covenant. Of course, including uh, Spain and um, all of the European uh, countries. Um, the states has the, um, the just they have the obligation to present a periodically a report regarding its uh, fulfillment of its obligation. This is the, um, the, uh, the, the, the report uh, system. It's a uh, five year. The uh, state present its report uh, before or in front of the committee, and we analyze the, uh, the report. And uh, we finish this dialogue with the state with the publication of a document named Concluding Observation. So, this concluding observation are made by uh, for each country. There is uh, one uh, document named concluding observation for each uh, period for each country. Here you have, for example, the uh, concluding observation uh, for um, Spain. Two thousand twelve. Uh, there have been many, many, not many, but several. Um, concluding observation in uh, which we uh, have uh, included 
uh, content regarding uh, this, uh, this uh, issue of uh, corporate sector activities. I remember last uh, year, for example, Norway and, um, and Belgium, probably more, but uh, I remember clearly the cases of uh, Norway and, and Belgium last year. But we, are, we don't um, only publish uh, uh, documents um, regarding or focusing the particular situation of an state, a particular state. We also publish doc general document, general, general uh, documents. Um, from uh, less to, to, to more um, importance, uh, open letter and statement our open letter are very uh, circumstantial uh, um, position on, on, on whatever that um, uh, important uh, for for the for the committee. For example, the position of the committee in the international day of I don't know the the, the fight against the AIDS, for example. Was the, uh, in that case, the, the committee published an open letter uh, underlining the importance of the fight uh, uh, or the fighting against uh, AIDS and the human rights and etc. etc. More important, more grounded, more uh, well uh, done are the statement. And the, the, more, the most important document are the general comment that is the official position of the committee is the authoritative um, uh, interpretation by the committee of the obligation is ruined in the um, in the in the covenant. Well, we have not a general comment at the moment uh, on uh, the issue of uh, corporate uh, sector activities, but. We do uh, have an, uh, a statement about this uh, this issue. Is yes, this is this one you have uh, here in the um, in the picture a statement on the obligation of state parties regarding the corporate sector on economic, social, and cultural rights. As you can uh, see, just the, in the title, we are talking about the state obligation, the obligation of the state's party regarding the corporate activity, but we are not dealing directly here with the obligation of the corporate sector, of the firms, of the enterprises, or whatever. I have said that, um, that we have not general comment, um, any general comment. We are working in a general comment uh, on this particular issue. Probably it will be published next year, it will be approved uh, next year, but it's, it's, we are working on, on, on it now. Uh, so I have said that uh, we have not still uh, general, uh, general comment um, regarding this particular issue, but we have a few general comments on other issues that, um, that uh, had um, a slight uh, comment on the issue of uh, corporate, uh, corporate uh, activities. For example, the general comment uh, number uh, 18 on the right to work. It's clear that the right to work is a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a case in, in which the, uh, the corporate sector activities is, is of the highest importance. It's uh, obvious. And in, even in this case, in uh, paragraph uh, 52, we have to, 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 to underline, to stress the idea that um, I am going to, to, to read, if you allow me to do it. While only states are parties to the covenant and are thus ultimately accountable for compliance with it, all members of society have responsibilities regarding the realization of the right to work. So here is, the, is clearly the, very clear the difference between the, the duty uh, viewers of, uh, regarding vis-a-vis -vis the covenant and vis-a-vis -vis the United Nations and vis-a-vis -vis the, uh, the committee, the duty viewers that are the, only the states, and those having responsibilities that are other actors, of course, uh, private uh, sector.
the um, state, the state uh, parties uh, should provide an environment facilitating the discharge of this uh, obligation. The state parties are um, responsible for the fulfillment of these responsibilities by, by the uh, corporate uh, sector or the private sector. Well, uh, particular issues that are very important uh, for us and uh, are, uh, they are uh, issues that uh, we are working now um, when we are um, working for the next uh, general comment on uh, corporate sector activities. Uh, first is the relation, the, the link, the, the nexus uh, between the state and the, um, and the business. Uh, you know that uh, more and more in the modern society there are very um, great situation uh, where uh, establish the, the, this uh, reasonable uh, link between the property and the, the enterprise, like where is the real uh, headquarters of an enterprise is not so, always so pretty clear as, or as obvious as, 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 as the Shiregor. So uh, this is a very important uh, point for, for us and um, especially when related with the next uh, point, when related, when related to the local or extraterritorial activities of this particular uh, enterprise. Um, of course, the, we, uh, we said that the, the state is always responsible for every branch, for every violation of this, uh, those uh, human rights in its own uh, territory, but uh, we have the, 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 the question of the problem. It's always responsible for the activities of their enterprise in, uh, abroad in other countries. Um, the, uh, the answer to this question is, um, is clearly yes. The difficult, question, the difficult point here is to establish uh, how could you, could you uh, create this link between the state obligation and the uh, uh, private uh, activities. The first, um, the first uh, case we, um, we start to deal with these um, problems of uh, extraterritorial activities uh, of uh, private enterprise um, and the um, possible um, um, uh, negative uh, effects that these activities could have in the in the enjoyment of economic, social, and cultural rights uh, abroad uh, was in the case of um, sovereign uh, wealth um, funds, funds. And this is was uh, this was for us the first case because this it was uh, uh, easier for us to establish to establish this obvious link in this case between the the, the, the enterprise as even being uh, formally juridically um, uh, private, uh, but it, it was uh, um, state owned. So the, the, the link between the, uh, the state and the, the state responsibility was pretty clear. Um, we start uh, several years ago uh, with uh, Norway and their uh, sovereign uh, wealth funds um, with a very important uh, invest in, uh, in, Central, in Central America was the, the first case. But uh, um, we um, we have uh, we have um, continued with this um, with this way of work, and now we are uh, asking for responsibilities to a state in which the uh, the, uh, the headquarters of uh, any enterprise 
uh, is in. Uh, the last, uh, last year, I remember the case of uh, Belgium, and we ask um, very special, um, or we, we demanded for very special responsibilities of uh, Belgium uh, for, an, uh, for extraterritorial activities of uh, our enterprise uh, with its, uh, its uh, headquarters in, uh, in Brussels. Vis-a-vis um, -vis activities uh, of this enterprise in, uh, in, in fast uh, Asia, I don't remember which uh, country, which was the, 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 the country, but uh, what I can uh, say with, um, with uh, uh, sure is that uh, it was an a Belgian enterprise with uh, headquarters in um, in, um, in Brussels. And um, I have to say that uh, um, even being a bit bold for our part uh, to ask for responsibilities to the state vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, extraterritorial activities of their enterprises, because we are not dealing uh, with uh, any um, uh, our uh, our. Uh, um, legal basis is not uh, any declaration, any recommendation by the United, uh, United Nations, any declaration, any resolution, any glo uh, global compact, any, any political document. Our uh, legal uh, basis is the, uh, is the covenant. It's a very classical uh, document of international law. It's a classical uh, treaty. <laughs> And, um, and the, 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 the state obligation are very clear by the, the Vienna Convention and so on. So we have to be very, um, very clear about that. But um, I have to say that the states um, have admitted the capacity of the committee for for demanding uh, them about this uh, this uh, this issue, which is for 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 us very very important, and uh, I am thinking I agree with uh, you that uh, this kind of activities um, had uh, could, um, had been um, uh, um, impossible uh, 10 15 years ago, and now uh, are, are are possible. The things are changing and. We in the committee are living this uh, an experience or a part of this of this uh, change, and uh, we are now asking or demanding the stage for responsibility for of uh, statutory <coughs> activities of um, of uh, private uh, companies. Um, we are dealing in the committee with the uh, with economic, social, and cultural rights. And uh, for this, um, and um, for this reason, there are several sectors that are of that are of a special importance for for us. Uh, you have here uh, water. We have a human right to water and sanitation, uh, water um, or housing or health or or food or job, obviously, or, or even education and, and more and more are um, service, services or rights provided by in many cases for, for enterprise, so are uh, sectors of special importance for, for us. Um, what kind of tools do the, um, the states uh, have to, to deal with this issue, to control these um, activities? Obviously, uh, legislative uh, issues, but not only. We are demanding the states, even for um, um, uh, judicial decision, for financial uh, tools, for politics. For a broad. Um, number of different uh, tools. And um, finally, remedies, that is what uh, we are talking about here. 
What kind of uh, remedies do, the, do, 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 do those affected have in case of, 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 of violation of these uh, human rights? First, the, 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 the most classical, most evident is the domestic uh, level remedies, judicial uh, domestic uh, um, remedies. Second, we demand the state for possibilities of um, demanding abroad. Uh, in the example, uh, we, have, um, uh, we have seen um, uh, previously of these uh, activities of the uh, Noruegan enterprise in uh, Central America. Do the victims in uh, Guatemala have uh, uh, any possibility to, to demand uh, in the uh, domestic um, system in uh, Norway? We demand the state uh, to, 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 to have this uh, uh, possibilities of being demanded in uh, their own uh, system by uh, foreigners. And last one is international remedies that are very new but still are uh, existing um, almost for a few countries. Um, probably you know that uh, the, um, uh, all the demanded um, additional protocol on uh, our covenant, on the covenant of economic, social and cultural rights, rights entered into force uh, last year, in, um, not two years ago, in uh, six, uh, May, May uh, 2012, well, uh, one, one year and uh, two years ago. And um, that uh, new protocol, uh, for the time being, there are only 18 uh, states uh, m uh, being a party of this uh, protocol, included uh, in Europe, included, uh, including Spain, Portugal, Belgium, and I don't know if uh, I don't Moldavia. I, I don't think uh, uh, anyone more. But uh, in any case, Portugal, uh, Belgium, and Spain is clear, uh, oh, it is, uh, clear that they are part of this uh, covenant. For the first time in the, um, in, in the history of the human uh, rights uh, system, or the universal system of human rights uh, protection, um, this um, additional protocol gives us the um, possibility of presenting uh, individual communication um, before uh, the, an international body, I like guess the International Committee on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights. Uh, we have uh, received the, um, at the time being just uh, four uh, cases and um, any of, uh, of uh, them uh, has anything to, 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 to to, to, to deal with this, uh, with this issue of uh, corporate sector. But in theory, it's of course possible to present uh, individual communication um, that are individual uh, denounces uh, for cases of, um, of a violation of human rights uh, because of um, uh, corporate uh, activities. Uh, local or even uh, for extraterritorial uh, activities. This is a very new and very important uh, mechanism that uh, we, we don't know what kind of, uh, of, 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 of reality is going to, 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 to bring to, to us, but it's uh, an, an open uh, door that uh, in the next uh, year we are going to, to see how it, uh, it works. So, uh, for my part, this is a very short, but uh, I think that uh, general and hopefully clear view of the situation of um, this particular problem of uh, corporate sector activities um, and state uh, obligations um, under human rights treaties with um, 
with a view on our case in the Committee of Economic, Social and Cultural Rights. And thank you very much, Escarricas Codanori, and I'm open to your consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Mikhail. Uh, I think that the main takeaway here, <coughs> excuse me, is that uh, the covenant, in the covenant we can see a clear distinction between the state duties to ensure uh, protection of certain rights and corporate responsibilities, where the state is responsible to make sure that corporations are actually acting in line with, uh, with, the, with the rights recognized in the, in the covenant. Uh, which is basically in line with, uh, with, uh, with uh, what's written in the United Nations guiding principles. Of course, there will be probably some fringe areas where we can argue that, uh, uh, that the international law may impose some direct responsibilities on corporations, but the basic principle is, is uh, as, you, as you described it. So, uh, the other point that I have noted is that uh, in your work in the committee you are increasingly recognizing that the obligation of the, of the states expands to the extraterritorial dimension. And so we can expect that uh, this development will continue. It starts with the state-owned enterprises uh, and as, the, as you gave the example of the sovereign wealth fund, I assume, in, in Norway. But we can probably expect to see this, see this going beyond state-owned uh, enterprises. And the, the last point that I have noted, which I think is, is um, relevant for our discussion in particular, is that all of this is connected to the need of providing remedies at the local level, at the domestic level, but increasingly at the international level as well. So this is probably what we can see in the uh, in, uh, in future. Now, uh, I don't want to yet open, open, open the floor for, for uh, discussion, but if you have any questions for qualification from Mikael, now is the time, otherwise we will move to, uh, to the next block. Everything's clear. Is there anything you want to add, Mikhail? I, I, I don't think that you need to, but <laughs> in case you would, you would disagree with anything that I have just said. No, perhaps um, just to add that I am a member also of the working group on individual communication. So I am especially interested in, uh, in uh, having a chat with any of you uh, about the possibilities of present and individual communication of this uh, in, in a case with, with these characteristics. Great. So let's move to the, to the next part of this, uh, in, this, uh, in this session. Uh, to my left is Inigo Ugarte, who's uh, having a very interesting career, multi pronged career, being a consultant, a consultant uh, in, let's say, human resource management, yeah. at the same time working, uh, working with uh, a group of engineers uh, in a startup company developing uh, a device to create artificial waves. Yeah. It's called uh, Garden Wave, wave, right? garden, wave, wave garden. garden. It's fascinating. Yeah. And very, <laughs> I would say, um, uh, not typical because it's the first product of its kind in the world, yeah. if I understand That's it right. correctly, but uh, it's, I would say, almost typical. Uh, how to say the English actually, I'm not surprised it comes from, from this area because this area is, is known for, for surfing. Surfing, yeah, yeah. That is more known in Australia or California <coughs> and so on, but here we have an engineer that, that had that idea 10 years ago and started developing and what we entered there like uh, investors, like uh, now they call business angels and uh, we are seven years developing that product and now it's in the market. And uh, you've got MBA as well, yeah. you've got the, the business education as well. So the question that I have for you is uh, how does all of this, all of this discussion on business and human rights is becoming relevant yeah. for companies that you work with and for your own company? Yeah. How does business and human rights uh, is uh, entering the world of small and medium enterprises, and how do they see it? Because I understand that uh, for most of local businesses, what we have just discussed with Mikael is incomprehensible. Yeah. It's something that uh, they That's don't really know what it, what it is about. Mm -hmm.
Okay, uh, so. Okay, yeah, so let me repeat. I was asking to repeat so that you can repeat what you just said, because from here, at least the two of us, we couldn't get the kind of services you are giving to the market. It was okay. incomprehensible. So if you could speak to us okay. and into the microphone, that would be really great. Thank you. You or me? For me? Yes, For me. please. So, so, so Inigo, please um, introduce yourself again. Okay. And then if you can continue the As Philip the says, uh, Philip says, uh, well, uh, I'm a psychologist with MBA. And I start my uh, job experience in a consultancy related to human resources. I travel a lot with vast country companies, giving them services from the recruiting, defining the procedures in the human resources there in different countries like China, Malaysia, Brazil, and everything. I saw a lot of things on those human rights elements. And uh, that's for my uh, first 10 years. And seven years ago, I started another career, one other career. It's the same career, but like an entrepreneur. Uh, with uh, uh, different companies, I invest. Well, we invest in different companies, startup companies, and we have um, the, a consultancy, our own consultancy, in a headquarters here in San Sebastian, and uh, where we provide services like internationalization, strategy, and people recruiting and human resources. And the other one is the business angels business that we invest in the startups to create the first step of that startup. And one of them is, Philip says, that Wave Garden. Wave Garden is a company that produces machines to produce artificial waves for surfing, okay? And it's the product that, uh, that is unique in the world. There is no product in the world like that that produces a dynamic wave for surfing, okay? If you see wavegarden.com, you, you see that. And then we have, we have uh, 26, 26 engineers working with that uh, different vision that Philip says. And recovering the, the question, okay, I, I answered the question, okay. Okay, I think that is a, a changing of a model in the, in the business, okay. The globalization that says uh, Philip is a reality now, and is becoming a factor of competitiveness in the world, and locally too. Why? 18 years ago, when I started working, the values were like discipline, um, were responsibility, were perseverance, were willingness to change, to go abroad in different conditions and so on. And we start working on that values, focusing on the business, like the most important idea in the world. We have to become a great leaders, we have to become a great uh, directors in order, monthly, to put a figure in the last line, okay? Now, the world change. In very local businesses and in startups like we have, the people are not coming to work with us for this. It's coming with, to work with us for that minimum level balance to have in the world, but in the work, but they value other things like, well, the environment, the different, uh, the development on the human capital, the, um, uh, well, at the end, the things that the globalization show us in the different channels, different channels, and at the end, it's, uh, it's like um, a model, like a behavior in, in business, okay? Uh, for example, I was uh, talking with, with Philip yesterday, uh, I saw how past country companies, 10 years ago I go with uh, past country companies in order to define all the human resources process there in China, okay? They have to buy 
uh, millions of millions of pieces for the product. And we were doing all the human resources process, the recruiting, the training programs, and we were in charge of those engineers that go to that, to, that, to that place in China. Okay, we do that job, which was very pleasant for us because you travel in China with 25, 26 years old, and well, you, go, you see the, 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 the world. No? But we visit a supplier in order to see how they work in that supplier. And in the uh, trip, the general manager says, this is the best supplier that we have. We have the best price, we have the best quality, we have the best timing, we have the procedure. Okay, As the pieces are very good. But I'm not very, uh, mm, I, I, don't, I don't know how they work, so let's go to visit them. And we were, we were uh, in that uh, uh, factory with thousands of employees, but there were uh, a place with 50 machines, 50 machines, yeah, doing different procedures. And well, we realized that there was a lot of people there in that factory. There were childs, there were men, women, and so on. And we asked for, how do you work this place? Place like the double of this, 50 machines, people sitting, people lying, people sleeping there in the. What's this? And the machine is working that. Oh no. Each machine, it runs by a family unit. Okay? 24 years a day, 24 hours a day. Uh, and the father, the mother, and the brother of the father of the mother is running a machine for 24 years, uh, hours a day. We were coming like, like this and we say, okay, the best price, the best timing, the best everything, but we can't work in this field. Mm? We can't do, do this. And there were a little bit of controversy because the Chinese start uh, arguing that, that, oh, but we are doing a, we are preserving the human rights because we give to these people the breakfast, the meal, the dinner, the bed, education for the children. And if you see from the other part, okay, well, you have some well, logic, but in the other ways, you see that people there sleeping in the field. Well, the Chinese are well, did they sleep there? Then don't worry. And all the a lot of people in the in the factory lying and everything. They are they are not a very good condition for that. No? And ten years ago, today, as uh, Philip uh, mentioned, the engineers that works in in Wave Garden, they have that things in their minds because all of them are surfers, and they travel around the world to catch the best wave. And the best wave are in Australia, in California, but they are in Malaysia and in other places. And they see those things. They see the different level of, of, of the people. No? So when they come here and they start developing the products that we are doing in Wave Garden, they have that mind. They have that they can't do something like. And they ask for, okay, where are our suppliers? Where are each supplier is and how they work for this? We have, our philosophy is to have suppliers from here. The 95% of our suppliers in Wave Garden are from, from Gipuzkoa, okay? But if we had one supplier in a, in a country, for example, we have clients that in Morocco, some clients in Africa, in Nigeria. We are, and, and we are very aware of how can we do the job there, protecting all, the, all these conditions. And we are a little bit, well, let's go to first to Austin or Dolgaro, Gales, or other places that we don't have any problems with those human rights or with those practices, okay? So at the end, 
I think that is a changing of model that is becoming a factor of competitiveness in the in the in, the, in our field. In our consultancy too, we are we we started four years ago with this consultancy. Now we are 11 people. We invest in the people. We invest in values, and thus um, model changing is becoming is going to the companies because we work with a lot of several companies in, in human resources, in strategy and internationalization. And this uh, different view is becoming a, a, a change, a factor of com competitiveness nowadays. That's my... <laughs> Excellent. Uh, so what you're saying is that, um, first of all, the small and medium enterprises are facing or are more and more exposed to, uh, exposed to human rights issues as, mm -hmm. they, as their value chains are yeah. becoming increasingly global, mm -hmm. such as is the case with the multinational companies. And the, the, the second thing that you have mentioned, which I think is relevant, is that uh, uh, taking care, being, let's say, responsible in this, in this area, is becoming increasingly important for attracting talent, yeah. actually building a human capital in a in a in a mm -hmm. in a in a in a company. Now, the, the question that I have in this respect is, what does it mean for the role of the state? Mm -hmm. What uh, we, we've heard from from Mikhail that the international law mm -hmm. is increasingly demanding the state to intervene in these matters, especially mm -hmm. in these complicated extraterritorial situ <coughs> uh, situations. So from your perspective, where would you see the greatest need for, let's say, the state to do something new, something what uh, it has not been doing? Well, I'm a I'm university teacher too, and, and well, the people are coming with that, those values inside when they come to the companies, no? They, they ask for, for those um, uh, environments that uh, consciousness of a sustainable world and everything. Okay, there for me there is a triple vision here. There is the business, the society, and the state. The states have the responsibility to regulate all of this, but if we don't do anything for the society, well, and the society works now in this globalization with different channels of inputs of information. I think that uh, if we are talking about human rights in the business, uh, there is an opportunity to, to focus like the state in to ensure or to develop those values in the companies, in the, in the, in the business, in order to put in the society a vision of the different way to do the business. Because what we are hearing in Gipuzkoa, in the Basque country, that uh, I don't know if it's the same in the rest of Europe, but I, well, I think that it's yes, okay. Uh, that the entrepreneur or the businessman is a man without any well, the only thing that he wants is money and, and steal the money and, and to produce more and everything. And we have that, that vision as entrepreneur. entrepreneur no? when, we, when we are with, uh, with our friends and even if sometimes with the family, uh, they say, oh, you are a businessman, you only want uh, the last line of in, red, in, in black and with a lot of needs there, a lot of money there, no? So, at the end, the uh, state uh, have to support this change of vision of the companies, giving them different values in a corporate responsibility and so on. And those values in, uh, from the business are going to uh, enter in the society. And if one society with uh, more comprehensive values that goes to the business, that creates richness and everything, uh, is a kind of 
allowed in, in, in the state, and the state has to focus in that society that has those values. And at the end, the state regulates those things. Uh, it's very important that the, in an in international way, like Mikkel says, that regulates things that, well, if, uh, like yesterday, we see that if Inditex do something wrong in, in Brazil on everything, Spain have something to say, Spain have something to do on that. Yes, we have to regulate all of this. So for me, it's the state have the uh, obligation to regulate and the other one to promote the different values in the business and society in order to, to maintain a balance or sustainability in, the, in, that, in that field. But now the people that goes to the companies have in their minds those things because of the globalization. I mean, and the, the, the people travel more and everything, and they have the, all the channels to have those inputs. Even if sometimes it's like a film. I mean, uh, the people that never goes to to Delhi or to Bangalore or to to Beijing or or Jinghua never saw never smell that, that thing, never feel, and only see that in their smartphones and so on. For them, it's like a film. Okay, another film, okay, this is But at the end, they have that change in their mind. Okay, these things, that are, is, they are passing there in, in the world. So it's an opportunity for the state to focus on that values and regulate for the companies. Well, I, I guess that uh, there's a lot, of do, a lot of to do in area of education or in area of business education. As you said, uh, if, if drawn this uh, vision of a greedy businessman or a businesswoman for, for, for that case, uh, as something would prevail in a society. And I guess this is also linked to the education that people are receiving at business schools. And I, and I would say that that's probably an area for some state intervention next mm -hmm. to being vocal uh, in public about, about, <laughs> about these matters. And you've also mentioned that uh, well, these things eventually need to be regulated. I would say that for small and medium enterprises and for those who approach the issues with certain sense of responsibility, mm -hmm. uh, this is essential for just ensuring a fair competition mm -hmm. with, with some companies who, who don't do it. Uh, Mikhail, so same question to you, and I assume that you might want to say something about the the remedy aspect of the of the state duty of the of the of the state duties to ensure protection of uh, of, uh, of human rights. You've mentioned this at the general level, but if you have any more specific ideas in terms of where the states in Europe and uh, and, uh, and the Spanish state in particular should focus its attention, then uh, would be all very happy to hear that. Basically, uh, my question was, uh, what should be the role of the state now in addressing these, these, uh, these, uh, these challenges? And in particular, what could state uh, do to improve the remedy, especially in these extraterritorial situations? If there's anything concrete coming out of, uh, out of your work? Of course, the, 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 the question could have um, many false um, answers, but... Um, I suppose that the most um, um, added value that I can uh, give, uh, provide here, or the most original uh, focus I can uh, I can provide uh, here, additional of, 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 um, to the to the knowledge that you, all of you uh, have about these uh, issues, is that uh, idea that this uh, you know, about this. Um, uh, very new, a very important uh, new remedy we have uh, in, uh, in the international arena that is the new uh, um, uh, additional protocol, or, uh, facultative protocol on the economic, social and cultural right. Uh, to talk about uh, this uh, protocol and the possibilities that uh, it uh, open, opens, 
uh, to the individual remedies uh, or to the individual communication to the uh, to the individual uh, particular uh, denouncers is very bold because it is very new and uh, we have not experience. we have not just a case presented about this issue so uh, we have of course not a jurisprudence about that but um, the, the the possibility is it's it's open in cases of uh, human rights violation for uh, corporate activities local or abroad if this uh, link with the state is uh, proof of, um, uh, with you, you have, uh, of course, passed through the, the, all, the, all the other possibilities in the local uh, system uh, and successfully, of course. Uh, you can, for the first time in the, uh, in, in, in the history of international uh, law, international law of human rights, to, to, to present uh, an, um, a communication to the committee. Um, this is a very uh, unknown possibility, um, and uh, the states uh, prefer it to, to, to remain unknown. That's what, what is um, logical at that, 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 that same uh, point. Um, in, um, in Belgium, it's very, very new because uh, Belgium is part of this, uh, this uh, protocol since uh, five, uh, no, less, less than five uh, months, uh, three, four months. And um, Spain and Portugal are members, uh, are parties to this uh, um, proto protocol uh, from the very beginning. But uh, still, uh, we have uh, haven't any um, any uh, workshop uh, to the judicial system or to the lawyers here in Spain to explain them how are the possibilities of these uh, new possibilities. Uh, what are the, the uh, new possibilities open to the to the victims? And the first uh, workshop we are going to, 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 to organize in Spain with, um, la, with the Escuela Diplomática de, de Madrid, Al Colegio de Abogados de Madrid, uh, is going to be held in, uh, in two, two months. So for, for, for uh, the every of us is very, very new, but it's a very interesting opportunity. And I, I think that this is the, the, the most uh, original view that I can I can't, um, provide or uh, give here. And, and, the, and the, uh, the status are, the, what is our responsibility for the status? The status, of course, um, are responsible for, for, um, for ratifying this uh, protocol. But uh, in the uh, general observation, in the, uh, excuse me, in the, um, in the concluding observation, we always um, call the states to, um, to um, to share, to publish, to make the, the concluding um, observation um, be, be, be known by the, the people. We ask the state to, 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 to publish the, the observation, to inform about the, the people about the, the, the observation, and uh, it's um, always uh, a missing uh, activity or uh, um, it's a very, very, very few states uh, inform uh, their, their communities about the possibilities of, uh, of this kind of, of, of remedies. And uh, that's why I, can, I think that uh, this kind of, uh, of, of frauds are a good uh, moment to, 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 uh, to, to make you aware of of these uh, this new possibilities. Do I understand correctly that there is a condition of exhaust, exhaustion of local remedies? I'm sorry? Um, to be able to send a communication to committee and to have committee to look into the case, uh, all possibilities at the domestic level must be used. Of I course, mean, of yeah, course. This is a general rule of international law of, of uh, Exhausting um, agotamiento de recursos internos, exhausting local remedies, or, or no. yeah, yeah, excellent. I just wanted to, to, mm -hmm. to make that clear. 
Okay, uh, since we don't have uh, too much time, we can we can continue uh, for too long. Uh, I would like to turn the attention to the to the to the audience. If you have questions or comments, especially focus either on what my two colleagues have uh, presented, or if you have your own views in respect to the next steps or the expectations from the states, uh, now is the time. Carlos, please, and Tricia, right uh, after. Well, it's just for uh, sharing with you our experience on corporate governance and and improving the management on uh, human rights imp impacts in businesses. Uh, from our experience, we consider that corporate governance is, is a, a really effective way to improve the, 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 the to improve the due diligence management uh, in the business and human rights. Well, first, because the interpretation of duty of care in the in the guiding principles as a due diligence, and some in, uh, this concept has, has been transported uh, to the national laws. One example is in Spain, that is, 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 is uh, uh, raising the, um, the, re the legal liability of the board about a, a risk and uh, the due diligence risk on uh, environmental, human rights, anti-corruption, and that kind of issues. So there's a legal liability in, in the national law, and that's obviously put it under the, um, the risk management of the board. So the, the, in, the, in the logical of the of management in the companies, they understand perfectly what's, what that's mean. And so, uh, putting attention on the potential issues or the risks on this area. And obviously, the, the awareness is, is basic in this, in this uh, point because uh, much of the people working in business, they don't know. Well, maybe they know some cases that, uh, that uh, Inigo told, but they, they don't know how manage that kind of situations in the best way to be effective in businesses and to be effective in respect uh, human rights at once. So uh, the awareness and the capacity building in, in this kind of new management issue uh, is important. But anyway, from the states, in, my, in, my, in our opinion, uh, should be done a lot of things and could be very effective in regulation on corporate governance and liability of the board and on the, on the impacts. Thank you. Patricia, please. Uh, Patricia Feeney from Rights and Accountability and Development. I were based in the UK. Um, I was interested with your presentation, Inigo, uh, that um, I got the impression that when you visited or the company visited the suppliers in China, the small producers who did it on time and yeah. at cost, um, I got the impression that they decided that they had to withdraw, mm -hmm. um, which of course raises all, you know, that's the big issue. Are you yeah. doing less harm or more mm -hmm. by staying and trying to uh, improve conditions and, and work I mean, as a consumer, you'd think, well, surely raising wages so that adults can support their families is one basic way of dealing with a supply chain problem. Uh, another thing would be to give you know, scholarships so that the kids go to school rather than sleep in the factory and work in the factory. And um, uh, So was it that the company was too small to consider uh, these kinds of um, alternatives to sort of just withdrawing livelihoods. Um, I mean, I think there's a lot of um, discussion. I, I work a lot on responsible supply chain management in conflict minerals, and it's rather uneven. And actually what we're finding, even in uh, the famous OECD and um, even the, the US Dodd-Frank, I mean, what, what you're getting is more like... Um, uh, a traceable certification for the product, but
but no real, in terms of the conflict minerals, say, no real improvements in workplace conditions. So I just wondered if you, the company, in your case, had considered op other options other than withdrawal. Okay, this, um, that uh, this was 10 years ago. And the, uh, the only thing that, uh, if, if we were there with other kind of people there, perhaps the vision uh, that they have is the opposite. Okay, they are doing well because these people were in the, well, in other sector and, uh, well, they don't have anything to eat and, uh, and they come here to do that. Okay. Um, but that, uh, I mean, the profile of the uh, Basque businessmen in the industry, uh, they, most of them, they have that vision of the human rights, even if the uh, other things are very good for the business. No? So we stop the business in that moment and we run away. And we say, don't worry, we, 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 we had an, uh, a meal with them, we had everything that, you know, China, or how is China with the business? No? The meal and the karaoke and everything. We stop there and we go out. Okay, well, let's go, I, I, I was in charge of the human resources and the process and my visit there was like, a, well, come with us, okay. Uh, okay, that uh, point and they start finding another supplier. No more, like Mr. Cordero says, we don't know about the purchasers to say, how can we do it this, uh, well in this Chinese company, no? The only thing that is that the, that that man says, "I'm not going to work with this kind of of people," and not even with uh, the vision, with uh, I think that the human rights uh, is in the in that brain, even in the vision of as my product is uh, doing wrong in not well conditions, but. I don't think 10 years ago that, that those human rights were, were inside of that man. This was a decision of, I can do, see this when I come in here to do the quality process, okay? I can see this and, and even if everything is right for my product, I can't see this and they are telling me that they, they, this is a, a, a very good uh, um, process or a very good situation for them, I, I can't see this. No? So at the end, uh, it's a kind of feeling uh, from each businessman in the field because, well, at the end, uh, like uh, my colleague says yesterday, Corta, we have a lot of things to be aware. Uh, we are to my my job is to sell my product, to sell my service. I have to be aware for a lot of laws. Uh, when I see that something that for me is not good, I make the decision I, and take the decision and let's go to other thing. But I don't put a procedure to, to say, okay, in that company there's not well conditions for those employees and so on. So that's the situation. That's the situation. I think that today uh, is easier to do that because... Uh, when you go to a company, uh, if there are no restrictions to take the photos and so on, that in China, well, sometimes there is, uh, you take the photos and that, and you can sh share with your with your net. At, at the end, anybody of that net goes to Mr. Cordero and says, what can, how, "What can I do with this? Or, what, who is the procedure?" And well, we can do something, no? but. That, that's the, the thing. Okay. Do, you, do you want to respond? It's about the first. Um, uh, we know the, 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 the very important the key role of um, corporate man uh, management in the um, enjoyment of um, human rights. 
And uh, that's why the, the first idea that uh, our statement, the statement we, we, we had to uh, talk about um, previously, uh, the first idea um, that we um, underlined is that um, the, uh, it's a uh, reads like, like that. The corporate, uh, corporate sector in many instances uh, contributes to the realization of the economic, social, and cultural rights in, in the covenant. This is the first idea we, we want to, 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 to start with, not with the idea that uh, uh, all about the um, corporate sector and human rights is about uh, danger or risk or, or, or adverse uh, effects or whatever. The, 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 the first uh, idea is the... Um, is the, the, the role of the, um, the companies or the role of the private sector also as, uh, as part of the, as, or as being part of the realization and the enjoyment of, of, of uh, human rights and for this uh, purpose of, of course the, 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 the corporate man management is the, is, the, is the key issue to, 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 to read it like, like, like that so we can um, we can name and even bl blame the, 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 the enterprise even when we can't uh, ask directly them or we can't demand uh, directly the, them um, anything. We can um, name them and blame uh, them, but we can also, and we, ha we, uh, we have to, to do, of course, to recognize it, uh, the, the, the role as, uh, as human rights. I don't know if it's the provider or not, but human rights. Uh, uh, supporters, uh, not, but uh, part of uh, human right uh, um, uh, enjoyment. Uh, okay, uh, we are cutting into our break because we started late, so we should, we should slowly wrap up. Uh, I may offer some reflections to these questions as, uh, uh, as well, but I want to give you one last opportunity if you have something pressing to say, something you want to ask. Are we good? Okay, so, so so let me let me let me offer offer some 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 takeaways for, for myself. I think I think it's very relevant what Carlos said about the let's say definition of director's duties in a corporate governance framework or in company law in terms of risk management and due diligence and linking basically these duties with uh, with uh, responsibility to respect human rights. And I think it, it, uh, it links to what Inigo was saying about the role of the state to um, basically send out the message that the human rights are relevant. And so this may be one way how to do it and how to start building, building the awareness uh, of human rights issues in, compan in companies through actually, through actually definition of, uh, of the duties of, uh, uh, of directors. One of the things that uh, we, have, uh, we have not addressed in, in great detail, but it, for me at least it was apparent that um, it is something that deserves attention, is actually the clarification of expectations for how companies should address some specific human rights issues, especially in, in, in value chain. And as uh, Trisha mentioned, when there is a problem in the supply chain, what should you do? Should you just go away? Should you try to... Should you try to uh, improve the situation. Obviously, if you are a startup and if you are looking for suppliers that kind of fits your business model, then nobody can expect you to start mending a situation that you have not been part of in the, in the, in the first place. But there are other situations and it's especially relevant for bigger companies. So we obviously need some, some more clarity in that. We need more standards. We need uh, ag agreement within an industry and this needs to be somehow reflected then in uh, legal regulations to ensure a level playing field. So that's, that's the way that we should, uh, we should, uh, we should, uh, we should take. Uh, and then the last question that we have, we have somehow discussed is the question of, of uh, remedies. And there is clear a development towards the recognition of extraterritorial, let's say, obligations on part of the, on part of the, on part of the states. And uh, there is a growing expectations then even in, the, in these situations, there should be a remedy provided. And the mechanisms, the new mechanisms by this facultative protocol that Mika mentioned, is an interesting option at the international level where domestic remedies uh, fail. But obviously, ideally, they should not fail. Ideally, they should work in a way that actually provide access to, to judicial remedy. So it's, it's very general conclusions, obviously, in this, in this limited uh, time 
we didn't have opportunity to go into much detail, but if there is a message that we can send to states, uh, my take would be these, uh, these, uh, these three, and I hope I haven't offended anyone by <laughs> making the conclusion. So, um, I guess we can end the session and go outside, enjoy the coffee, and be back at 11.15 for the next session. Thank you, and thank you. <laughs>